Welcome to Living Savior Lutheran Church Online Devotional. Today, we have Advent 4, the gift of family. The Gospel of Matthew begins with a family tree from Abraham to Jesus. The Gospel of Luke contains a different family tree than in, and, uh, and between the names, we hear the story of God at work in our world from generation to generation. The Advent and Christmas season highlight the significance of family and friends in our lives. We witness Mary, and Joseph, Elizabeth, Zachariah, the shepherds. As God's children, we become part of the family tree. Welcome. I am Pastor Angela, and I am delighted to welcome you to this fourth Advent devotional. And so we gather together. I invite you to gather your thoughts, your family, your friends, and yourself as we begin. We begin with our gathering dialogue, which you can find in the PDF version, or you can, uh, uh, can just listen and pray. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, and friends, aunts, uncles, sons, and daughters, people who reach out to nurture and love, people who live by water and word, God adopts us and names us and claims us. God renews us, uplifts and restores us. Generations from Abraham to David to Joseph, to Jesus, son of Mary, son of God. Our generations too, all those to come, we are joined in the family of God. And so we hear our opening song and I invite you to, uh, to take note, listen. Not by 
Savior of the nations, come. And so we pray. O oh God, for whom we long, we thank you for the gift of family and friends. Strengthen the ties that bind us together, that we may sing with Mary, my soul magnifies you and holy is your name. You shower mercy from generation to generation. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your gift to the world. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. So we hear our scripture reading <clears throat> from Matthew, the first chapter, the first verse. A record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Aram. Aram was the father of Amenadab. Amenadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David the king. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asaph. Asaph was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Joram. Joram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Amos. Amos was the father of Josiah. Josiah was the father of Jeho uh, Jehokaniah and his brothers. This was at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jehokaniah was the father of Shelatiel. Shelatiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abidud. Abiud was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azar was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim. Achim was the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eleazar. Eleazar was the father of Mathan. Mathan was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. So there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from Abraham, from uh, David to the exile at Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile to Babylon to the Christ. God's words of life for God's people. And then hear this reading from the letter of First John, the third chapter. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. That's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And it's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him. And in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready with glistening purity of God's, of Jesus' life as a model for our own. God's words of life for God's people. 
And I invite you um, to sit in quiet and do your own reflection if you'd prefer, or you can listen as um, I offer a meditation. The fourth gift of Advent is family. And it may seem really like an odd gift, yet as God's beloved, as part of God's family, the birth of our Savior Jesus is the birth of our inclusion into this family. So I think it would be really important to have a little bit of background on the Genesis, which is the first word that Matthew uses, or the origins list in the gospel. You see, this gospel is recognized as the most Jewish in form and written to the most typically Jewish audience. And here at the beginning of this good news, the gospel writer is trying to place Jesus into what would be normal and expected for a Jewish person. Who is your family? What is your tribe? Who are you based on what we know about your tribe and your family? The author does a great job connecting Jesus into this family tree spiritually and ancestrally. On the front of your worship folder, you will notice that there is a, a tree shape, a Jesus Christmas tree, if you will. The words opening this chapter name the generations, the ancestors, and help those that are hearing and reading about Jesus connect this one particular person with God's bigger picture. You see, Jesus came at a particular time and place. He was a particular person, yet for centuries, God had been sending the prophets to promise this long-expected Messiah. And so here we have God trying to, God doing it, and the author trying to connect it all together, trying to connect Jesus, born at this particular time, all the way back to Abraham the first chosen ancestor. The other thing that is really easy to overlook is that in this list of men are named five women. Five women almost snuck in. And if you don't know your Jewish history very well or you've forgotten your Old Testament stories, you might miss them all together. Four of them have names. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Mary. And one has no name listed, but more by, what would I say, who she was known for before she gave birth. She was known as the wife of Uriah, but we know her also is as Bathsheba. Rahab and Ruth, you may not know, were not even Jewish. Jesus' family tree includes Gentiles. Jesus' family tree includes enemies of the Jews, these women who started following Yahweh, the Lord God, and became part of the family. And then there are the women that can be part of the Me Too movement as well. Um, it, it can be said that Rahab and, um, and Tamar, they were not treated very well. The men in these stories, the men used by God, as were the women, to advance the kingdom, all part of the family. But these men, sinful, their actions are never labeled sinful, yet if you know their stories, you know they are liars and swindlers, thieves, bullies, power greedy, murderers. Just ask the wife of Uriah what David did. All part of the family tree. And so they're all listed here, helping us see the wide angle view, if you will, of God's enduring redemptive work among the people of the world. God chose the people of Israel. God chose them. And then as they conquered and forgot God and came back to God and conquered and forgot God, 
God used those who were around them, Rahab, Ruth. And so we have this wide-angle view of God's enduring work among the people of the world, and then God's enduring redemptive work in sending the Son, Jesus. Sending the Son, Jesus Christ, as our brother, with God as our Father, the one who is without sin, perfect among imperfectly people perfect people, perfectly imperfect people, if you will. God's Son, without sin, comes to us through God's grace to bring us all into God's embrace. God's grace reaches and encircles in the heart of Jesus to bring us all in. And so Advent, the gift of family, it is the birth of the Son of God that makes us part of each other. Through the water of baptism, we are created to family. We are united together in bonds of love. God says, welcome, you are mine. And we hear about those bonds of love in the letter from 1 John. We are family. We are God's family. We are loved We are adopted, adopted into God's family. If you've ever adopted an animal, or gracious, if you've ever adopted a child, you have some understanding of the depth of love that that God has for us and for this world. It's only by God's grace that we are adopted. It is only by God's gift of Jesus Forgiveness, grace, mercy, love, that we're able to say, I belong to the family. Belonging in the family, this family, takes us back to the list of Matthew. It means that our sinful ways, our tendencies to forget and wander away from God, it means we're included. It means we're forgiven. It means that God can use us, and we are in God's embrace, in God's grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. For this time of waiting and watching, for your coming, O Savior, we give you thanks. We give thanks, O Lord. When the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, we cry to you, O Lord. For the hope that shines through the darkest night, we turn to you, O Lord. For the gifts of friends and family who walk with us through life, we praise your name, O Lord. For those who sorrow in this time of year, we cry for you to come, O Lord, for those without voice in this world and for those who do not listen. We cry out for boldness in your name, O Lord. Gather us together under the promise of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so our closing song. Okay. Come on, closing song. Who trim the heart and set the table? People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Thank you.
The peace of God accompany your waiting, the light of Christ warm at your hearts, and the joy of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 